Welcome once again to the JLo Artist YouTube channel. Thanks for joining me on this artistic adventure. Today we'll be working with ink, pen and ink. So have your kneaded eraser, a number two or an HB pencil, handy, and any type of ink that you would like to use. But make sure that it's archival, that it's permanent, that it's black, and a smooth ink. And let's start doing some ink drawing. I'm just going to start out with a pencil. And the pencil is a guide. Um, we're going to get rid of all the graphite that we've, we put on here. But um, we just need a guide. We need to figure out where we want to put everything. So um, we start out with just a shape. This the shape uh, represents where I want his head to go. Um, and right now, it's just, that's, that's all it is. Just an area where you want, want things to go. Um, you leave yourself a little bit of room for a body or for something going on. I don't know very much about this gentleman. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll just have his little arm up here. We'll make a little tennis racket and we'll have some like dead butterflies around. Yeah, a little stick figure, just, uh, you know, when I'm doing uh, caricatures of people and it's live, I'll ask them questions and I, I try to get them to laugh. Sometimes when you say to people, you know, smile or whatever, they give you this fakey smile that's not really their smile. Um, it's, it's one that they feel like is more appealing, uh, but it's not them. And so I try to get them to laugh a little bit so that I can... I can get a smile that is them. You know what I mean? And then I talk to them about hobbies and interests and things like that. Um, so that I can do something with their body that is a little more uh, personal. Sometimes animals, you know, I have a dog or, you know, a cat or a, a goat. I don't know. Maybe we'll put a little goat on this guy. Anyway, um, so the next thing you do then is you want to really capture that likeness. And so the first thing you want to do is look for things that uh, are dominant or prevalent or, you know, like the shape of something, uh, the shape of the nose, the shape of the ears, um, anything that kind of stands out a little bit. Um, for me, it's the beard. It just kind of screams out. We know that the eyes are pretty much in the middle of the head. And one thing is his eyebrows are a little more distinctive. And so maybe I'll throw those in there. And uh, I'll just throw in some little shape of the eye. Sometimes the shape of the nose is important. Sometimes they have little round noses. You can start out with a circle. Sometimes they're a little more triangular. Whatever you feel like that shape is. Sometimes it's just you look at it and you think, well, that looks like a triangle. So you just do a triangle. Simplify it. Keep it simple. He could, you know, with, with that big old bushy beard, could be like a mountain man or something. I mean, there's lots of different things you could do. And sometimes according to their personality. The shape of the head is important, too. If you kind of feel like your the head is square, you do it a little more square. You just simplify it down to the basic shapes of things that you, you see or think you see. And I just go through this as quick as I can because uh, this is just a guide still. R really what, what takes over is that 
pen when you get that pen going. And the other thing is, is you want you want to capture uh, the person as quick as you can, and that is just by your impressions. So the quicker you go, the more you're using your impressions rather than trying to analyze everything. I think sometimes we analyze things too much. What does he teach? Does he teach English? History. And yeah, maybe I will have a little butterflies flying around. One splatting on his. So basically, that's that's about it for my guide. All this is going to get erased. Uh, we want to get rid of it as fast as we can. The type of pen you want to use, and and there are multiple types of pens you like to use. I like the Pigma Microns just because they're black, they're archival. Um, I, I really like the way that they work. There's a type of Pigma Micron 2 that is um, called a graphic pen, and it's kind of flat, and so you get thick and thin lines as you're um, using that graphic pen. I'm just going to use this uh, Pigma Micron right now. And I'm just going to go back over some of my lines. And again, I just want to look at, at the shape of everything that's in there and see if I can't uh, just grab some things that kind of make that shape of his of him. I have a, a way of doing eyes, and I think you've all done these with me, where you start out with little brackets, and then you do your, your pupil in the center, like a little Pac-Man shape, a little rounded C shape, because you've got a little shine in the eye there. And depending on the eye, if it's a light-colored eye, you put a uh, less line in it. So I, I do these little starbursty lines coming out from the the pupil, kind of like that. And it's kind of a standard eye that I do on everybody. And then the line, just, just like we went through in Art 1, it's, it's kind of, you just kind of hatch through it, however you want to do it. Some people like a lot of hatching, some people like a little less. I'll just hatch through it and then figure, hey, if it's darker, I'm going to go back into it. And I just keep going into it until it's as dark or as light as I want it to be. Nostrils are always, I, I, not always, but usually I start out with this little upside down Nike swoosh for the nose, for the nostrils, the inside of the nostril. And then you can hatch through that, you know, just kind of depends on the person. I just kind of keep going through it until it's kind of what I want it to be. And again, if you practice this, the more you practice it, the easier it gets. It's like anything else. You know, some of you play musical instruments and you, you just know you've got to practice. I played the musical instrument, but I didn't practice. I played an E-flat alto saxophone.
I can't really see his lips, and so I'm just using the the hair on his beard to kind of define where the lip goes. Remember when you're doing when you're doing hair, the uh, the line that you throw in there to define the hair should go in the direction that the hair flows, whether it's a beard or hair, whatever it is. That just kind of helps to make it look more like like the hair. If it's really light, you just leave out line. If it's darker, you have to add more line. And at this point, you can start exaggerating things if you wanted to. I mean, the thing I want to exaggerate is maybe his beard a little bit, whether that's... It's interesting, those things change quite a bit. Like, um, I've seen caricatures of Bob Ross, and the thing they exaggerate is that afro. And I think to myself, you know, I don't think he always had that afro. Another thing is ears. Everybody's ears are very, very different. You know, I mean, you. it's interesting to me that ears are kind of like fingerprints. You, uh, you just, they're all so different. And they can be a very defining characteristic of some people. And other people, you know, hardly notice them. Again, you just throw them in as fast as you can. Once you've kind of established some things, you just scribble your way through it. Scribble, scribble, scribble. I do want to get rid of is graphite as quick as I possibly can. I also have kind of a, a little standard way of drawing things like hands and that's another thing that you kind of get figure out what it is that you want to do and you develop your own kind of style. Sometimes I have no idea what I'm going to do when I first start it. At this point, I want to get rid of the graphite. Every little bit of graphite that I can. Because it's just kind of messy. It was just a guide anyway. So this is why I like kneaded erasers. So easy to get rid of your graphite. And if you're not drawing heavy, it comes off pretty quick. After a while, you'll get to the point where you can see what it is that you want to do before you even draw it. You don't need the graphite. It just uh, get rid of that step. And what you do you find that you're drawing faster and more accurate.
which often doesn't make sense, but it it really does work. And if you use a different pen, sometimes you don't have to go back over it as much. You've heard that saying, time is money. Well, that's never more true than with caricatures. You want to get through them as fast as you can. Any of you ever have your caricature done? Somebody ever draw a caricature of you? You ever have those guys at Lagoon do it? Have you court? I have not. You ever been tempted? Do you watch them? Yeah, maybe we need a word. S P L A T. From here on, everything you add to it is just gravy. You know, whatever you want to do. Every artist has their kind of favorite pencils and pens and things, too. So as you just kind of do this and you get into it and figure things out for yourself. You'll figure those things out, too. Last thing you do is you sign it. Always put your signature on it. Hopefully that was fun. Hopefully you enjoyed yourself. A little bit of practice goes a long way. And who knows? Maybe you'll figure your niche in life is caricatures and you'll be a very famous caricature artist. And have fun with it. Hopefully you'll keep doing art. Because art makes life better.